Alrighty. Raise your right hand if you've ever made a decision based on fear. Keep your hand raised. Raise your left hand if you've ever made a decision based on creativity. DJ, cue the music. <laughs> Every day, we are given the chance to make thousands of choices. Most of them, we don't even think about. Coffee, tea. Gym, no gym. Cranky with the kids, patient with the kids. There's decisions daily, and we can make decisions based on fear or based on creativity. I just didn't know what to do. I thought, what makes me different from other artists? <coughs> I like entertaining people. This is me in my fabulous side life as a basketball performer. I would travel around to schools and inspire students through spinning basketballs and Harlem Globetrotter tricks. <coughs> Go figure, it was what I was obsessed with when I was in my early teens. I would just practice and practice and practice and could spin up to six basketballs at a time. Wow. I was nuts. And now I've translated that into spinning basketballs on paintbrushes and putting them in people's teeth. <laughs> I totally forgot my basketball and you all want to see that right now, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and I went to Brazil one summer before college uh, and I decided I'm going to teach these kids how to play basketball. But then because of the language barrier, I found myself completely stumped besides bole passe. <laughs> I wanted to have a communication, like a conversation with these young children. So I grabbed a spare sheet of paper and I began to draw stick figures. And in that moment, I realized that art communicated beyond language, beyond faith, beyond culture. Every single barrier that was in my path was completely obliterated with a stick figure. Go figure. And we had a great conversation. And that's when I decided to become an artist and put down the basketball and communicate love, life, creativity through art. And that was 15 years ago. And I can say, after all these years of speaking to thousands of people, the one thing that brings us all together is this unbelievable birthright that we have called creativity. So creative living is when you live a life driven by curiosity rather than fear. And I just encourage you today, maybe at the end when you're networking, to have a chance to ask your neighbor and say, hey, can you think of one story from your life where you made a decision based on curiosity rather than fear? And where did it take you? Where did it lead? I was recently listening to a woman, Jill Hicks. Have you ever heard of her? She's one of the survivors from the London bombing. She said, I never was late for work, ever. And the one time I missed the train and had to take the bus happened to be the day that a bomber was on that train, on the bus. And she was just two people away. It blew out her legs. She's laying there dying in a pool of her own blood, and she said, I heard two voices. One voice was a voice of death. It was a really sweet, feminine voice. And that voice said to me, hey, babe, you've just lost both of your legs, and you're going to die, but it's OK. I've got you. Then she heard a rather cranky, stubborn voice that was masculine. Life. Yes, you lost both of your legs, but you have an incredible future, and you have a choice right now if you're going to live or die. I don't know how she did it, but the human body is rather remarkable. And she sat up on the stumps and tourniqueted her own legs calmly to where everyone else in the bus was like, how are you so calm in the midst of the pain you must be in? And she said, I chose out of curiosity. I wanted to see what my life would be like if I lived rather than died. And she said it was her curiosity that kept her alive that day. And she had keys that were lodged into the back of her head with the force of the blast. She had her hair blown off. She said the hardest thing was looking in a mirror when she awoke out of being resuscitated three times on the way to the hospital. And now she uses her voice, and she's got a crazy sense of humor. She was only like this tall, under five foot at the blast. And so when they gave her new legs, she said, hey, guess what? I've always been really short. Can you make them? I want to be tall. And she walked out of that hospital like five and a half feet tall. She was loving it. But now she uses her voice to work with people 
that think they need to use violence as a way to communicate their message. And she says, no, we can use peace. And she's helped just impact thousands of Paul, thousands of lives through her curiosity to stay alive. Yes, but um, have a wonderful, wonderful creative day. And remember to choose to make the decisions out of creativity and curiosity rather than fear. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Lots of things to think about there.